a couple of times throughout the process, and we'll get to some of the details later, but we promise them up front, right, we will help you through the entire process, as much help as you want. If you don't want any help at all, right, then you'll just have to tick off the boxes that we want. But we're hoping for this to not be one more hoop that stands between you and teaching in a different way, but to kind of get you moving. And thus far, the feedback we've gotten has been really positive, um, and well, we'll go through some of that. <coughs> All right, so in order to like kind of help our faculty, just like yours probably, they're super busy, they're on committees, they're doing work, they're doing activities, they organize clubs, right? We kind of put together this a la carte menu for them <coughs> that they have to kind of go through. So there's one big meeting in the beginning where we kind of set up the, the atmosphere, right? Hey, this is us, I'm gonna be grading your stuff grading means, right? Uh, we're looking for certain things. We mainly want to have a com uh, conversation started. Uh, we start them up as students in this blended learning classroom. So they are, which is something that often faculty, right, we don't see the student view. In most LMSs, you have to do some concoctions to kind of actually get a, a good student feel, right, for what students see. We see our side with all the extra uh, buttons that students don't have. Um, so we put them in a course that they will go through and work through over six weeks. Um, I follow them closely and I kind of, I try to stay out of the discussions because generally they're really good. They ask questions and they talk to each other and I comment with them back and forth, hey, this is a cool tool that you could use for this and hey, did you know that this person has taught something similar last semester? Maybe you guys want to talk about right? research strategies in each department. Everyone teaches them a little differently. Um, so I chime in with things like that and further comment, but generally the discussions they have are amazing online that I get to lurk, <laughs> lurk in. But, um, so they are in this course over six weeks, and during those six weeks, they see us in the very beginning and at the very end, and in between we put together this a la carte menu that they get to choose from, almost like McDonald's, right? <coughs> so they have to attend, um, and we've been kind of nimble with this, we can, because of scheduling problems, right? Um, the, uh, we strongly hope that they attend the two face-to-face -face sessions, uh, one at the beginning and one at the end. If they don't, they have an extra meeting with us uh, because of teaching schedules or whatever. Uh, we have put together a set of workshops that kind of follow along this um, blah, blended learning course, right? That they can attend at their leisure. They can go to a couple of the le um, learning management systems we currently have uh, two different sets here on campus. We're, we're piloting one, and we have Blackboard as the other one. So um, we're having a couple of them, a couple of the workshops you'll see up there twice, once for the one LMS, once for the other one. Um, there's a couple of workshops that are more the techie size, right? And then a couple of other workshops, the discussion board, the copyright, the video integration. Um, they have the tech pieces, but most of those, um, uh, most of those in, in classes and in practice, right, uh, would be so widespread you couldn't present just one, right? So you can present them with kind of ideas, get them going, get them started, and t tell them where the resources are, what sites they are, what could you do with this, and then have them dream big, right? And then be there as they dream big and support them as they keep going. Um, <coughs> so two different sets of workshops. And you see we kind of have them pick and choose throughout the semester, right, what to attend, what not to attend. We kind of keep track of it, almost like attendance in classes. But just these workshops are available for anyone on yes. campus to attend. So we're taking advantage of the fact that we're presenting those workshops anyways right. to then get the blended, the people in the blended certification course to also participate. So it just helps to cut down the work on these on these four people. Those topics, are they based upon like a survey or, or they like mm, Well, uh, I guess the discussion boards and the video integration with the blogs, right, those are things that you can use to blend courses. So uh, I don't think this was based on the survey. We just kind of well, went through what we already had best. Had, yeah, we already had the course. workshops planned. Um, and then we went looked at the workshops we had planned and picked out the ones that would relate to something mm -hmm. that they may use as mm -hmm. part of their um, process in blending their course. So there's, this isn't all the workshops we do, but mm -hmm. a good portion of them. And we kind of had them fit with the workshop as they went through the, the blended learning course. 
but at about this time they would start building. So about this time it would be good to know something about oh discussion boards and and before they start building it would be really good to know something about copyright so that we don't even get to where we put stuff up that we have to take back down or put an extra statement in. So they're kind of going along um, the course. But I don't think there was a survey. No. So kind of like you guys, we, we decided, we knew. <laughs> but maybe in the future we would have a survey. Um, but the more you know faculty, right, you kind of hear mm -hmm. around what they would like to do and what's the newest, coolest thing out there that they may want to have the opportunity to play with, kind of guided play. Um, all right. So then the next problem on this campus, and probably anywhere, was to come up with a blended learning definition, right? Academics want to define their terms so that we know what we're talking about, uh, which is uh, difficult. <laughs> so the blended learning definition that currently stands on this campus is slightly different than, I guess, what you would normally think of it as, um, and you can read. But it is um, blended learning for us, as it is at the moment, means uh, anything that is not right you, the teacher, and students all in one place. Uh, so this could be you, the teacher, with one student for five minutes, with another student for another minute, with another student, right, replacing class time, which other people might just think of as individual consultation. It has nothing to do with blended learning. We've done this for 30 years. Or <coughs> taking them down to the art museum or doing community outreach projects with them, right, is uh, currently um, folded into our blended learning definition. The, uh, these are decided by faculty groups. Faculty, right? You're shaking your head. <coughs> um, it's a start, right? We're yeah. starting. We're, we've gone from blended learning, that's not Rollins, to blended learning, like how do we make this Rollins, right? Mm -hmm. um, and the conversation has been started. We have, they have just passed. We're very proud of them, I think. Um, <laughs> and a three year pilot, and I'm not sure that they quite got what they were passing, but it doesn't matter. They have passed it through the <laughs> big faculty meeting. Um, they passed a three-year pilot of trying blended learning, right? Uh, and one of the parts of this is, and I think it's still in there, that they will go through some kind of process to get them ready to teach blended. Because we do not just want people canceling and blended for Rollins from like 25 to 45 percent of their classroom time. Your seat time is done differently, right? You're doing something other than you and everybody in the room, one place, talking. Um, so we're hoping to get them to right, think differently. But there's some administrative and just school and definition problems. But I thought we would give you that um, definition briefly. <clears throat> because only a small part of this, and for a lot of our faculty, right, uh, any of the community outreach and all that stuff can be brought back in using technology, right? So it's not necessarily exclusive, either one, but only one part of this is actually computer assisted, a big part. Um, but that's how it was sold uh, to the faculty. All right, so to orient our par uh, participants in the beginning, we uh, get them to, well, we'll give them a chance to explore this learning management system. Up to now, the three classes were taught the three blended learning workshops we've given were taught in the piloting system. Uh, we're going to start using our own system soon, and that was just funding issues and stuff. But it's now official, so we can start rolling out the other ones as well. But we started them with, and maybe it was a good experience to start off faculty in a fresh learning uh, management system, because they didn't know the system, just like a new student, incoming student, right? They had to get familiarized with the system. They were in the system as a student. They were facing various frustrations that students would face, right, that most faculty members don't have much patience for, right? So it's kind of an example in empathy, um, a good exercise. Um, so they're in this course. Um, many of them are kind of reluctant to try out a new mode, right? Um, but they kind of get into it. And then uh, they're going to progress through it. We orient them on the first evening. Uh, we kind of do a little, hey, where do you stand with blended? Let's get a conversation started. What do you think this might go? What are you envisioning? Um, and we send them off. Uh, we want to, and we noticed that the first time around, right, you want to make sure if you do want this to be a success, that right up front, and I've heard this reiterated around the room a couple of times, right, how dare we tell them how to teach, right? Where IT, 
uh, we're not even supposed to be able to make eye contact, right? <laughs> but uh, we want to make, right up front, you want to make clear that this is not a technology tool, tool uh, course, right? By the end of this, you will be comfortable with whatever it is you want to do. And you will have someone there with you, whatever room you're in, whatever class, you will not look like an idiot, right? Um, you will, it'll, it will work, it will go off. But uh, in order to get there, we need to restructure your course. And sometimes it doesn't take a lot of restructuring, right? A well-aligned course is a well-aligned course, whether it's called face-to-face, online, blended, right? It doesn't matter. But uh, they all need to be kind of tweaked depending on how you're teaching them. Uh, so up front, we promise them, right, that we will go be there with them throughout this whole process if they work with us. Um, and the first three weeks of the six-week course, they don't really do anything technology. They're in this course as a student, they do a lot of like pedagogical restructuring of courses, right? Aligning course goals with course outcomes and thinking of what might I be able to do online what, uh, or blended or outside of the traditional norm, right? How could I open this up? How could we rethink this assignment and get even more out of it, right? Um, so big, big, big deal. We do not want this, right? And I find this when I said earlier that a lot of professors on this campus have taught as long as I'm alive, right? I find that amazing. I find them, right, inspiring to look at. They have, they have collected so much knowledge. It's a life worth of research, right? And so much knowledge is right up here, but they have lost their way of communicating this, right? So you have all this knowledge, all this expertise, just kind of balled up and it's almost coming out of their ears in steam, right? Because they get frustrated with the computer and with the whatever. But, uh, right, so we, we want him to properly communicate to her, right? Is the whole deal of this. The, the expertise is not changing. The context of the uh, content of the courses should not change, right? This is not supposed to be watered down education at all, right? The same stuff just how are, we, how are we getting it from point A to point B? Um, and then too, we want to remind, especially the older professors, right? While these students may walk around, plugged in to their ears and have something on their phones, even while walking, walk, eating, driving, riding a bike, right? That, that does not make them technology experts, right? That is, they are right, fumbling just like you if you ask them to do anything more than the basics, right? It kind of reduces pressure. <coughs> All right. But we uh, challenge them to rethink, right, how they present materials, not necessarily the materials themselves, right? And then to, we um, kind of present them with the ideal of, wow, you could be cutting ties of 50-minute lectures, 50 minutes, 50 minutes. These two topics really don't go together, but I have 50 minutes. Here we go, next chapter, roop, 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 right? You could, you could chuck that differently. Um, and to many of them, this sounds kind of cool. Um, and for that, obviously, we need a well-defined course. Otherwise, this could be disastrous. <laughs> um, and then I thought we would share just a few tips of what we have learned. Uh, showing a blended learning course was a big deal to these professors. They were kind of like, oh, blended learning, we're talking about it. I can't imagine what this animal looks like. It's a zebra, does it have a trunk? I don't know what zebras look like. They don't exist in my universe, right? Um, so in the beginning, we just kind of took some time and, uh, and as you have more people on your campus teaching blended, right? You can kind of show them around a blended learning course and more or less very quickly they realize, ah, nor is this the one magic pill that anyone swallows and now is the super duper teacher and every student and every cranium gets all the information they ever needed, right? Uh, and it's not something that right, will revolutionize my teaching. I am still the teacher, I'm still sending out stuff, right? They will still do assignments, they will still watch videos, they will still listen to me, they will still write. Most of it is pretty much teaching, is teaching, is teaching, right? A few more tools and a few different ways of distributing, <coughs> distributing it. But it actually, uh, it kind of pulls down their pressure and their anxiety. Oh, I'm still going to be teaching. It's, a lot of this is the same, right? Just revamped a little. Um, can't see this. Uh, tip two that also took down a lot of anxiety. Um, if you have this on your campus, 
right? <coughs> if you have the people that are really, and often the people that are really uh, against whatever the technology is, right, are outspoken and loud. Uh, uh, if you have someone like this, look at your uh, mission statements, right, and your colleges to kind of back yourself up. Uh, almost all of our mission statements uh, have something like innovative teaching, student-centered teaching, right? Uh, innovative teaching means we need to try something new. That's the whole point of innovative, right? So we need to at least uh, have a look at it so then Right? Anyone who goes through our workshops and says, ah, you know, this was cool, but it's really not for my field, my discipline, that's cool, right? I don't want to force anything onto anyone, just like we don't do in classes, right? But we need for them to be open and try things, uh, to at least think them through. Um, so give them your mission statement, right? Um, we are small teaching uh, colleges. We're innovative teachers. We're really proud of this. This fits right into that. Um, and then start a productive conversation, right? If nothing else, um, these professors can stick their hands, heads in the sand for as long as they want to. This is not going to go away, right? Um, <clears throat> so they can have an educated opinion about it by the end of it. Um, most of them come out really excited and write a cool course, and they roll out, and stuff happens, and projects happen. And, uh, whether or not they do a ton of technology, and most of them do do right, more projects, that's generally what this turns into, uh, the students enjoy it because the class is well designed, the class is laid out, they can find things, right? Just that, whew, um, well, they've been enjoying it. Um, and then maybe just one more time, uh, a brief layout of our overall course. Um, so we have six weeks, as I said, and the first three weeks are all pedagogy. There's nothing else going on. <coughs> There's uh, right, some training into this new system, a learning management system uh, for them. Uh, there's some course designs, course goals, course outlines, uh, outcomes, are they aligned, what's going on, what do you actually want to do? Um, course building map, uh, what might we want to put online, right? or what might we want to do differently, what might we want to turn into a cool project, what is the part of this class that people have always been struggling with? Uh, and maybe you can do something else, because obviously it has not been working the way, and maybe this could be something new. Um, and then, hop that. <coughs> Number one, tips. Uh, if you have people on campus, and we've peppered that throughout the entire course, that already do this under the radar, more or less illegal, right? Um, <laughs> on the campus. Um, have them video, videotape them, right? Bring them in and say, hey, um, what do you think? We were trying to get this conversation going. Would you mind sharing for a minute or two, right, with your colleagues? And they're on your campus. They're not some person in a different school. Because often what we hear, right, faculty members want to see facts, right? Uh, they want to see statistics. Is this actually working? Is this efficient? And then we say, well, you know, statistics say, well, statistics, what school does this come out of? Where was this taken? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, well, well, that's not wrong. Well, no, we haven't started. Well, there you go. <laughs> so, right? Um, but if you have people on your campus, and I'm pretty sure all of you do, right, that do have uh, faculty members doing just some of this, right? There's digital uh, storytelling could be used, or having some people brought in, right? If you share some, have them share for a minute or two capture them, videotape it, right, put it into your course. So as they go through it, they hear from, right in the very beginning, they hear from Pat, and then they hear from various colleagues around campus of what they do and what they think about it, right? Giving them some tips, it really makes it, okay, I'm not alone in this. If I get shot, I know I have some allies. <laughs> um, <laughs> module two, um, right, there's a lot of pedagogy. And again, stress that over and over with your faculty members because they're going to get antsy. They say, listen, man, you know, lady, right, I've talked forever. I don't want to hear this. I need the tools. I'm nervous about how this is going to go down. Um, and you just want to make sure, right, to calm them and <clears throat> let them do this. Um, remind them that this is not the magic potion. Right, uh, they were a good teacher before, otherwise they wouldn't be at Rollins, right? We have good teachers here. They're here at a teaching institution just like yours, right? Uh, they're not at a huge university um, 
they're at small colleges and they've chosen that for a reason, right? So you're a good teacher now, you're gonna be even better at the end. What's to lose, right? Um, and then <coughs> the first half, uh, they'll have a, their first IT meeting, the first uh, instructional technology meeting, one-on-one -on -one during the first three modules to kind of get them going, right? And those are really, I have enjoyed those tremendously. You get to kind of look at other people's syllabi and you can open them up and just, right, almost like you have a nephew and you get them all riled up and then you get to send them home. It's the same thing. You can, <laughs> you can, send, you can come up with a million ideas, right, of how you could do this. Wow, this is so cool. You could, hoo, hoo. And uh, they get all excited, right? And then, but not like the little nephew that you sent back home all sugared up, right? You stay there with them <laughs> for the semester and you see it through. But just uh, very exciting to see the different disciplines and different things. Um, module four, uh, we're starting to, uh, right, they start to build one part of their course. They're starting with the, the front page, right? Whatever is gonna first paste the student. Often faculty members forget about this. This is some place where we dump documents, right? <laughs> Makes it easy to share. Um, well, this is going to be blended, right? The students are going to see you a little less. They're going to this needs to be a little more clear, right? Um, uh, instructions and all of it. <clears throat> but again, we always want to re-bring the focus onto the teaching, not the technology. Why are you actually doing this? Um, module five, uh, right? The interaction. Uh, we want to um, kind of. Throughout the whole process, we ask our faculty members, how could whatever you're doing be more student-centered? That means not me to student, that means student to student, right? Um, me, student, yes, uh, student, student, if they can teach each other, right? If they can peer review, if they can, and there's all these fun tools out there, if they can be a little more involved with each other, right? That's more time they spend on whatever the material is and diving into it, right? The better. Um, oh, and in Model 5, we also, we have the copyright part, and then one big chunk of all of this, uh, by going, putting more content online, right, is accessibility, um, which we have, uh, Jessica and Amy are big proponents of the middle lotto, right, you put stuff online, wow, uh, now you have a visually impaired person, <laughs> congratulations. You have screen readers, but you have put these wonderful videos together that they can hear, they can't see, or you have someone who's right blind, they need to be, like all this stuff needs to be thought of, um, preferably in the beginning. It's easier to actually have them build materials that are, um, well, that fit into this, right, accessible, rather than like having them go back and redo a lot of this. Um, and then we have the last one. Encourage them, right? Uh, it's, yeah, it's, right, you're teaching, they're, they're used to this classroom, it's me, I have the knowledge, it's you, I'm going to give you the knowledge, and they're really good at this. Uh, it's going to be a little different, right, so it's almost like being a new teacher all over again, which is exciting, right, you get to throw away the yellow pages that you have collected over years and years and dusting, right, in your office, um, you get to start something new, uh, same content, right, but it new. And I think even for people that haven't taught as long as I'm alive, that's a good thing to do every couple of years, right? To just kind of dust off stuff and start over. <coughs> so that was pretty much like our blended learning course for the last, well, we've done it three times now. We had one session in the summer, in May, and then we had one in September, and then one in October. We're still going through it at the moment. Um, do you, do any of your institutions have a blended learning course for faculty at the moment? Do you do blended learning at your institutions? Or are you the people who, no, stop blended learning? Some. Some. Huh? No, not initially. No. Not. But, I, but a few professors are. A few professors are. Yeah. The under the radar ones. Mm -hmm. By your definition, we do, mm -hmm. and I've worked with Professor, does this fall under your definition of working with a music professor who bought a textbook from Norton and she said, it's got this file, it says it can go right into Moodle, and we you know, loaded mm -hmm. it in, she's using it um, as the textbook, and it's working beautifully, and I mean, is that blended learning? What, 
computer assisted learning, right? Mm -hmm. That's what all of us say. And a lot of faculty actually say that. Well, I assign assignments outside of class, I'm blending. Um, which, right, um, not to downplay your point at all, this is, it's, a question. It's, it's amazing, right, no, they say blended learning is when you reduce seat time, so if she reduces the time she spends with students in class, mm -hmm. um, and she replaces that with something outside of class mm -hmm. that she somehow or other couldn't have shown in class, so with the music class, right, let's say it loaded in all the music files, so everybody's got everything there, they don't have to go to the library, the music mm -hmm. library, or it's just easier access for the student, right? But it hasn't changed the interaction of the student with the material. Okay. If she, instead of um, having them listen to the files in class and having a discussion, having them go outside of campus to some event to go to, that would be when learning. And then report back, bring that back in. But yeah, that's the first step, right? You have, it's but more for better access, easier access. So that like our photography classes and our filmmaking classes mm -hmm. that take students outside mm -hmm. the classroom as part of that is that blended learning? That's always it, been how it's It would done. start to be. They say blended learning is as long as you're not, mm -hmm. you and the faculty member and the whole class together mm -hmm. going somewhere, that's a field trip, right? Mm -hmm. um, you, if you start sending them out by themselves and giving them specific assignments, mm -hmm. that would start to be blended mm -hmm. learning. So a photojournalism class is very much good. Yeah. Might be good to, like, an example of how some of our faculty are <coughs> blending is they may reduce, if we have three hour classes in the evening, mm -hmm. They may only meet for an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of the time, mm -hmm. the students are either on their own or doing other project work. Right. Um, so that would be funded at that point. Um, or just, to or just kind of rethink, yeah. right, you're presenting information. Instead, let your students discover the information. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about a law class. And instead of me mm -hmm. handing out the law, like write some material, I will put them into groups. Um, and have them discover, right, you are now the lawyer and you are the defendant and you are the whatever, and then have them come up with this material, right? You will have to tailor some of it and make sure they find the proper material that you want. You can hand it out and have them discuss, debate, and a lot of that stuff can happen outside of class, right? Um, so it's the same information, but repackaged, and kind of, it's, a lot of it is almost like a flipped classroom. You want to, right, um, Part of it is you could, with things online, right, you could send out the information, make sure everyone has the information that they're going to need, but then have them interact with it differently than they would in the classroom watched by you. Um, so if you send them out to that music concert, right, before then have them read through various things or have them ta act out various things, have them go check out a guitar at the music <coughs> building and right, figure out how the sounds are made or whatever, so that would be blending. I have a biology professor who is, um, I think he's doing it this term, I don't have any data to present, but he, uh, for the first half of his term, he is providing the students with this external data. Mm -hmm. It's optional if they use it or not, and he's capturing their grades and comparing it against the students who didn't utilize the data. Mm -hmm. And then for the second half of the term, he's taking it all away. And he's going, it sounds kind of cool, but um, <laughs> then you can compare that data and see how how effective it was, but you know, you know, it'd be interesting to see what his final results are. Uh -huh. you know, he's messing with their heads. Oh. <laughs> well, that's it. Carrie, do you want to take two minutes to talk about the grant? Yeah. Um, so we're in the process of writing a grant. Hopefully it gets approved. Um, <laughs> that is, we, well, I, most of you probably have heard from me. I sent out an email about few months ago asking if anybody was interested in, in participating, but the way the grant's going to work is we're going to do a six-week module, hopefully we'll do the six-week module like this, um, but with faculty and instructional technologists in all of the ACS schools. And um, we would hopefully maybe run it this way, it depends on the people that are participating, and there's three other schools that have said yes for sure that they will participate. Um, but the idea will be that we have the online portion on Blackboard or whatever, and then the face-to-faces -face that you saw will be remote at all the other institutions. And the, we're trying to get kind of like a centralized certification process so that it'll be easier and not such a heavy workload because this was a huge workload for us to develop um, for all the other institutions that maybe do not have the manpower to do so. 
So that's the goal with this grant that we're writing the first time, is hopefully we'll be able to run it multiple times um, throughout the years to come. But so you would be the instructional technologist working with your faculty at your institution for the face-to-face -face part of blended learning and then the online piece would be the material that these guys have already created. So helping both sides of that house. Yeah, there's um, the way we run this is Anna kind of heads it up with like the grading because there's certain grading that happens, um, but not really grading, it's basically they did it or they didn't do it. Mm -hmm. um, part of this process, in order for them to be certified, they have to complete 90% of the course. So they have to do all the work and they have to show up to all the activities and everything has a point attached to it. Um, the discussions have points attached to them. That's what makes it kind of, uh, the discussions really good is because they have to do them first off, but they get involved and you'll see like they start to go back and forth like crazy. Mm -hmm. And so that's where they start to build the community and then they, they, they reach out to each other separately when they start to produce their courses. So it's been an interesting dynamic I would say. And a lot of the faculty that went through the program with us First time around, second, second time, they keep coming back now. Mm -hmm. So now they're like, you know, they want to develop another course. And they just do it on their own at that point. The initial certification, we're going to add dollars to it, of course. And the faculty that choose to be part of it, if, if we get the grant, we will give them the money to complete the course. So you should be able to get a faculty member to be paid to complete the course. And by the end of the course, but it's not just the hoop that they jump through, they have built almost uh, a, a big part of their course that yeah. they will actually be teaching. So it's all applicable to what they're doing they're not, to the faculty member, right? They're not wasting their time, they're still going to be teaching material. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is there a breakdown across disciplines and sort of if these are tenure track or they assisted associate or full professors? I mean, where some of the people that are taking that? They're all over. We have a couple of departments so that are more hostile towards blended learning than others. So um, a couple of them are saying, hey, go ahead, right? No no big deal. And others are saying, um, Science and social so sciences, humanities, fine arts. Break it down we in those really, four. Well, we have fewer <laughs> finance, or other. we have two music right now. Yeah. We have sciences, biology, we have psychology. Yeah. I've seen so it's even that map. distributed across the disciplines? Yes. Yeah. So it started understand. out, the first rollout was with uh, adjuncts in the evening. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so it was adjuncts. Mm -hmm. And then the last two sets were mainly full-time faculty. Tenure and faculty? I yeah. think they're tenured. Some of them are already. Tenured. There's some tenure, some yeah. lecture. So like in our cor current oh. course, there's two science faculty of biology, yeah. right? There's two English, two, English, two mm -hmm. um, music, right? English, English, two yeah. music. So it's kind of like spread out. We don't we uh, limit the course to like ten to twelve mm -hmm. per course because yeah. otherwise it's, we can't manage it. But it's been all over the yeah. communication. Have you had people start and not successfully complete based on your completion? Yeah, faculty mm -hmm. members are busy, right? So stuff comes up, kids get sick, have the flu, can't finish, right? Uh, and they just say, wow, this is cool. I don't have the time right now. I'm going to do it again mm -hmm. later. Is it all based on um, deadlines throughout no. the six modules, or it's no. just wide open? Yeah, yeah. 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 In yeah. the end, right, this whole thing, their course gets reviewed before it gets uh, taught. Mm -hmm. by, And that structure is still being melded, right? But the institution wants to make sure that this is still a course that meets Rollins standards. This is a good course. Students are learning even though they're spending less time in the classroom, which is how up to now we have evaluated this, right? It makes people kind of nervous to start taking some of that away. Mm -hmm. um, so by the end of it, um, like a lot of, uh, a lot of participants, uh, the deadlines for them are a little more flexible depending on when they actually teach these courses. So some, right, they want to start sniffling into it and they start taking a course, let's say in spring, they don't actually teach until May. So there, the deadlines that are set up to get you ready to teach in January for this, um, the spring semester, right, um, or the fall semester, sorry, they wouldn't apply as much. So there, there it depends on the case. Well, Who's doing the judging of up to yeah. snuff? Up to snuff? Well. well, that's the conversation that needs to be had on this campus right now. Initially, we started with the, uh, our evening program. 
the whole program, uh, and they would evaluate because there were classes taught associate in the dean. evening program. Okay. And an, associate, an associate dean in the whole program determines if it's up to snuff in yeah. the whole program. And then it's, okay. But with the day program having accepted it, that whole process of who determines, mm -hmm. right, this is up to departments, what departments don't want to do it, <coughs> this is up to, or don't want blended learning at all, this is up to dean level, who has say over this, it's mm -hmm. currently being <laughs> yeah, what they put forth is up to 25%. They don't really have to get the mm -hmm. certification past that than they do. Um, um, so that's for the ANS. Yeah, 25 to 50, and, and ANS has said no class can be more than 50. Percent. Mm -hmm. blended percent, blended blended. percent blended learning. Because that percent replacement of seat time. Yeah. Because then you would go to more class time was blended than face to face, right. and they can't imagine that right now. That's that's too much for them. Which is fine. We're a residential college, right? The students yeah. are here anyway. Wait, wait, wait. But go with the flow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but there's there's a lot of this that still needs to be hatched out. But we have it in the three year trial period now on the books. Right. So. But but this is real progress because my first year here, the concept of blended learning came up and this faculty exploded. <laughs> oh my god, you couldn't possibly do that. Yes. And I mean, it was it was fighting and no, and and we had some faculty who were already doing it, who really started saying, "Oh my God, I'm not going to get a, I'm not going to get a raise, or I'm not going to get tenure, because mm -hmm. I'm doing this, and these people are all saying I shouldn't do this, right?" And um, our academic council, our faculty academic council on the one hand was saying, no, you can't possibly do this. And on the other hand, they're saying, well, we would never tell faculty what pedagogy to do. Well, wait a minute, I think that's what you're doing, right? And so it's taken three years of them thinking about the ridiculousness of those two statements to get to this point where they're now ready to actually consider blended learning, but now, there have the, now the faculty have to jump through a bunch of hoops. They have to get certified, they have to do this, they have to do that. Two, three years from now, right, this will all disappear, right, because they will feel comfortable with it, it will be okay, you know, and, and everything will be fine, and we will look back at this as a blip. So they have to get certified if they're going to do civic engagement? No, they, they consciously, they actually, when they first wrote the definition, right. That, that the answer yeah. was yes. And the faculty went, the faculty were like, wait a minute, I've been doing this forever. What do you mean I have to get certified to do this? So they actually wrote into the policy a clause to remove civic engagement, okay. community engagement from the definition of blended learning. Yeah, right? They put in a they put in an escape clause for themselves yeah. because because of that. So who in the room is going to do this with Carrie? Jan, did you did, did I hear that? Tim's up. Did I hear Jan that you're doing it? David sends one. David sends one. It's uh, Kristen. Oh, you're doing it? No, it's Kristen. It's me. Oh. <laughs> and and Rhodes, Kevin. No, that's not one on either. Rhodes is doing it. Yeah, Kevin is Kevin the person. Is yeah. Oh. Okay, so Davidson's doing it. Rhodes is doing it, and and Hendricks is doing it. Okay. Okay. Well, we're looking. For anybody else? Jump in. We haven't written the full piece yet. Go ahead. <laughs> I have a question, is the, the blended definition <laughs> referring to seat time? Mm -hmm. So if somebody flips the content but still sits in the room for a collaboration? It's ridiculous, right? That Why would you base anything on the okay. seat time? That doesn't yeah. mean learning. Yeah. But right, but that's not blended. No, no. Gotcha. Okay. 